Hi everybody, I'm Mark Pfeffer, the DICE News Managing Editor. This week we have a webinar from David Bolton, who's our community guide for C++ and C Sharp. And the topic is programming practices that will keep you employed. I'm gonna turn it right over to David. David, thanks for joining us and thanks for hosting the webinar. Thank you, Mark. I'm David Bolton, and tonight I want to talk about these five practices that, are, that will help you maybe stay in a job a bit longer. The first one I'd like to cover is getting into the zone. W one of the worst things when programming is, is being interrupted all the time. Uh, studies have shown that it can take up to half an hour to regain your concentration after an interruption, whether it's from email, an instant message, or a colleague tapping you, uh, or anything at all. And to, to get the most productivity out of programming, you really need to be focused and to stay on the ball. Uh, it's, the, the term for this is getting into the zone, and there are various techniques you can use to do this. Um, one that I like is putting on a pair of headphones. Um, noise reduction headphones are really good for this kind of thing. You can get them for $50 or so. And then maybe a little bit of background music, music they're familiar with. Uh, this will cut out the background noise, the office noise, and it will let you really, really focus on the on what you're doing. And um, if you're really good, you can get maybe half an hour, an hour of it. Um, but other techniques you may want to do when you do that is close your, close your email, um, switch off your instant messenger, and ask colleagues to respect their headphones. If they see you wearing them, they know not to come near you. Um, and as soon as you're finished, take them off so they, so they know. Uh, that's that's getting into the zone and it, it's, it's really, really good. I, I, I try and do this every day because my productivity, I think it doubles, trebles, maybe more, and I can just whiz through code solving problems. The next, the next one I'd like to discuss is a technique I call wearing a designer's hat. Where, what I found is when I'm doing, for example, designing graphical interfaces, whether it's in a game or a business application, it's very easy to be critical, to be self-critical um, when you're as a programmer and thinking, no, I don't want to do that. And this is an absolute no-no. It's a bit like brainstorming. You want to be absolutely non-judgmental and just completely phase out the programming side of things and just, as I say, put on a designer's hat and forget the programming. Design a way to your heart's consent and then at the end, once you've done that, put your programmer's hat back on and then have a look and think, oh, 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 is, is this, uh, you know, uh, can I program this? Um, it's amazing the difference it makes. If, you, if you're constantly being self-critical, pulling yourself back, holding yourself back, you'll find it harder to do your designing. Um, I think this is true in other areas as well, but I, I, I particularly do it with designing graphics and, and things like that. Right, the next item is one that's applicable for when you're debugging code. Um, and I've written a lot of code in my time, and the worst thing that can happen is when you show a demo and you give a demo and something falls over. And basically, the only way to combat this is to try and step through or at least run through in a debugger every line of your code. Um, now, if you've, got a, if you've got a function, a method that's maybe 100 lines long, it might have five or six or 10 decision points. And this makes it harder because if each one multiplies by two the number of choices that pass through your program. Um, if you've got four points, for example, that's two times two times two times two, which is 16. So you've got 16 different areas that your program can run. And really, you've got to try testing it 16 different ways to cover that. But it does make a difference if you can debug at least, or at least step through or run through every single line of your code. There are various tools that can help with this, uh, and it's an area called static coverage. Um, there's a few open source tools that are probably worth looking into to help you debugging. Right, the, the, the next one is, it sounds obvious, but use meaningful longer variable names. I've when I started programming in basic in, in tiny basic back a few years back a couple of decades ago, it was very easy to have a program full of A's and B's and short names like that. Um, in the Fortran era left a lot of people using variables I, J, K and L um, for integers. 
Uh, it's just the way that the compiler automatically made those ints. And I think a lot of that crept into programming in basic. And those days, to be honest, are long gone. Use meaningful names and try and, uh, and, a, and a good habit to get into. If you're using nouns, um, for example, for variables, and you want you want them to be a meaningful name. You, uh, if you're doing an action, for example, get value or store value, that's fine. Though at least you can, functions that start with get are obvious. What they do in the same we store. Um, so it, it's obvious. But you know, try and use meaningful names. Uh, a lot of software houses will have. Um, style guides, so obviously you have to stick to those, but I, I expect most of those will sort of have rules like that. But even if you don't, it's a good habit to get into. And for my final point, uh, it's to do with databases and naming. Now, most databases have, uh, we're talking about SQL databases here, uh, have a, a database, and then within the database, you have multiple tables, and within each table, you have multiple columns. And it's a, such a simple thing, but you have the table names in uppercase and the database names and the column names in lowercase. What that means is when you come to read your SQL, it's obvious what, what is a table, what is and what isn't. And some databases, I've seen four or five character names for the, for the table. So it's not at all obvious if it's a table or if it's a field. But by using this type of schema, voila, you've got, um, and I, it makes it easy to read and understand. And that's, and that's it. Um, thank you for listening.